with Balanle Olukani. She is a popular television broadcaster and filmmaker, and she joins us now from Lagos. And thanks so much for, for joining us on what we can see has been a tumultuous um, couple of days in Nigeria. You know, what were you hoping from this election? And what do you think Nigerians ended up with here? We saw a glimpse really there of the chaos, of the confusion, and the fact that things are still so tense. Yeah, so I think when it comes to what were we hoping, uh, you know, INEC, the body that is conducting the elections, passed an electoral act in 2022. And pretty much the electoral act said that the results were going to be transmitted on their platform. So it was going to be an electronic transmission. Once the votes were done being correlated and counted at the polling units, right after then they had a device that would allow them to capture the uh, results from the polling unit and it was going to be transmitted and uploaded directly onto a platform that every single Nigerian would have the opportunity to be able to see the results. That did not happen. You saw situations where uh, INEC officials, the people who were conducting the elections at the polling units, refused to upload the results. You saw situations where they said that they didn't have the ability to, that the device was slow. And even more so, the actual portal that has the results, up to now, up to 50% of the polling units' results have not been uploaded. So the question I think all of us are asking is, at the correlation center that's happening right now in the counting in Abuja, what are you guys counting? Like, what results are you showing us? Number two, a lot of the results that are being uploaded onto the database do not compare with the results that people took pictures of on their phone. I, I think what people have to understand is that Nigerians didn't just vote and leave. They stayed at their polling units till 1, 2 a.m., 3 a.m., and counted those results with the INEC officials. And so we all have proof of what actually happened at our polling units, and we have pictures of it, and we're seeing that it's not the same thing that they're telling us at the polling center, uh, correlation center in Abuja. It, 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 it feels like it's just basically they're lying to us, right to our faces, and there seems to be no responsibility for that. Um, yeah. You know, this election is, is not just important, it is make or break for Nigeria. I can hear the emotion, obviously, and as you point out, this was supposed to be technology that was supposed to make things more transparent, not less so. I, I take your point. People are posting these results and the discrepancies all over social media. I've seen them for myself. Now, to give an example, where you are, you voice particular concern about Lagos. You know, wh why? What did you see there that told you we're being lied to? I'm, Lagos State is, when you think about Lagos, Lagos is a metropolitan city. We all know the role and the power that social media has, especially in Lagos. A lot of people in Lagos are tired of the ruling party. A lot of people in Lagos also came out to vote. The numbers that they're telling us of people that came out to vote, it doesn't correlate with what really happened. A lot of people were disenfranchised. They were not able to vote because there were thugs that were sponsored to come and disrupt the polling units. We, we saw videos of people, thugs, coming to polling units, and the police officers did absolutely nothing. They did nothing. So to us, we're kind of asking ourselves, like, why are we not being allowed to vote? What is the reason? What, what, what are people so afraid of that's going to come out if Nigerians choose to say, okay, this is who I want to cast my vote for? At the end of the day, Nigeria is at the breaking point. And I think for every single Nigerian, especially young people, the voting population of the people that were registered, it's about 39% are youth. And those people came out to vote. You know, they came out to vote. The numbers are not correlating with what they said. Not only that, this afternoon, we actually had PDP, which is one of the opposition parties, and they're not, they didn't even win Lagos. They specifically said that the numbers that INEC presented does not correlate with what, with the amount of people that came. They have different numbers. Because what they, what we, what you guys need to understand is that at the end of the day, all the parties, they made sure that they were doing their own counts. Because at, we all knew that INEC was going to do mm -hmm. something like this. Mm -hmm. It's interesting, though, because they're observers and they serve a purpose and people are seeing these discrepancies. And we have heard specifically from Nigeria's youth with all the passion and all the frustration that, that you're expressing to us now. And 
What happens now, I have to ask you? This, this election has clearly fallen short so far, and yet you know that the Nigeria's Electoral Commission has already said, no way, we're not doing a redo here. As far as we're concerned, you know, they've rejected the claims from the opposition parties, saying, look, these elections have been fair. They've been fine. We will continue to tally the votes. Well, it looks like what's going to happen is they're probably going to continue counting and it looks like it's going to have to go to court, um, which is really unfortunate because technically what's supposed to happen in specific situations, and this is what their electoral law states, in situations where there's a cancellation, if the amount of votes that were cancelled there could possibly affect the final results, there's supposed to be a rerun. A lot of the polling units, the amount of votes that were cancelled is going to affect the final results. So what is really interesting is to see how we're supposed to be in a democracy. They're the ones that passed the ele they're the ones that drafted the electoral act, but yet they seem to not be adhering to it. Just for the fact that the results have not been transmitted and up till now they, they're still choosing not to, that alone in itself questionable and it shows that INEC is not only being being, they, they've been compromised, they're also not being transparent, and they have not conducted a free and fair election. And if that's not happened, then technically we're supposed to have another election. You, you know, I know you're going to give me blowback on this, but some people would say, look, uh, Nigeria is in its adolescence in terms of a democracy. This is a very large country. You know, obviously, when you look at the number of registered voters, this is a, a large task. They are still counting. The results are in no way, shape, or form official right now. Well, what do you say to that, to say, like, look, patience, just give us some time here? I, I think the issue is it's not really about patience. It's the fact that INEC has chosen not to communicate and address the issues. We're sh we have pictures that show that you have a piece of paper where results were, were recorded, and then after the results were recorded, someone took a pen and canceled those results out and put a new result, and you want us to accept it? That's the issue is that, can you, INEC, explain that? So I, we're finding that the chairman is not communicating with us. You know, I think a lot of times when you think about the institutions of Nigeria, they're so used to just carrying on and doing whatever they want without accountability. But Nigerians have finally woken up to the point where we're saying, no, you must be accountable to us. We're a democracy. If you ask us to come out and vote, we cast our vote. We expect the results to reflect who we voted for, not who you've been paid to say is going to win. So there has to be accountability. If not, the INEC uh, chairman needs to go ahead and step down and resign. If he's unable to do his duties based on what he's supposed to, it's this independent, it's the independent electoral commission. It doesn't feel like they're being independent right now. Yeah, and we see you and other people in Nigeria, the youth in particular, demanding their franchise uh, from the electoral commission. You know, a lot of this is born of the unexpected results of Peter Obi, uh, who I believe you support. He, he is the next generation, as it were, and yet it seems like uh, a 70-year-old from the ruling party right now is in the lead. What do you think it will mean here if, if indeed there isn't that generational shift? And, and what is Nigeria's youth looking for in terms of this perhaps being more of a movement that will continue, not just for this election? Um. The movement has already started. You know, you, you have to, when you think about where this came from, this came from NSARS, and this came from us finally demanding that we're treated as citizens of our country. And Nigerian youth are finally involved in politics. So it's not going to be going down. It's not, we're not going back, no matter what happens. In terms of, you know, the potential of having um, Bola Ahmed Tinubu as the president, I think a lot of Nigerian youth are worried about his health. We're worried about his ability to be able to rule Nigeria. We've been ruled by so many people who are much older, and they don't seem to be willing to accept or understand what it is that we need. But even more important, what we're looking for is a competent leader. Nigeria is at its breaking point. The amount of people that have exodus and left this country because it feels like it's unlivable. Everyone has said it. We don't have good roads. We don't have good light. We don't have health care. We don't have education. Last year, the average Nigerian youth spent eight months at home because our schools were on strike and it didn't seem like our government was, had any interest. So when we're saying we need a mindset of someone that's young, someone that's agile, someone that is going to listen to the Nigerian people, that is what we need. We need people who are accountable. And a lot of times when you look at the past leaders or the people that are running, they don't seem accountable, which is why a lot of Nigerian youth we have chosen and we're saying, you know what, 
this Peter Obi looks like someone that's listening to us. And we mm. want to make sure that we are heard. Mm. The point is for us, whatever was voted on Saturday, we right. want those results. We don't want the results that they are doctoring. That is the most important thing. If we know that these results are free and fair, whoever wins, wins. But right now, what they're giving right. us is not what we voted on Saturday. Okay. And, we, and, and we will leave it there for now. But certainly we hear your passion and you've given us great insight into what's going on now as we see the fallout from this election. Thanks so much. Appreciate it.